We think of spacecraft as these solid, expertly engineered emissaries of humanity exploring the universe. But really, they're just machines with computers, and like your laptop, they can be hacked. And so can NASA, which is kind of insane to think about. When it comes right down to it, NASA is just like any modern business, relying on a network of computers both on the ground and in space. And because it's all computer-based, NASA has to protect its network from cyber attacks like any other big company does, or else risk the loss or theft of very important and sensitive data. But NASA is a little more vulnerable than most. The agency not only uses a massive amount of computers, it relies on people working at sites all over the world. And because all these databases and servers were retroactively woven together, that's what opens up weak spots in the security system. As a point of reference, in 2010 and 2011, there were 5,408 computer security incidents at NASA. In one instance, hackers even gained full functional control of NASA's networks. And it's not just access to computers, hackers can also access NASA satellites. Hackers gained access to the Landsat 7 satellite twice in 2007 and 2008, but only gained access, they couldn't control it. Two more serious attacks were waged on NASA's Terra EO satellite in 2008, where the hackers actually gained control for two minutes in June and nine minutes in October. They were able to issue commands to the satellite, but didn't do it. It might seem innocuous when we're talking about Earth observation spacecraft, but the ability for one country to control another country's satellites does have some serious implications. It could give an enemy a critical advantage in war, the modern-day incarnation of which is digital, heavily reliant on GPS, and uses orbital cameras for reconnaissance and troop preparation. But hacking satellites isn't always nefarious. Sometimes hacking has good intentions behind it. Say NASA's funding for a mission runs out, but the satellite is still active. It's possible for private citizens or a lesser funded space organization to talk to it with radio waves the same way NASA does. And this has happened. Almost. NASA's International Sun-Earth Explorer 3, or ISEE-3, launched on its space weather mission in 1978 and was retired in 1997. But it was never shut down properly, so a team of citizen scientists devised a way to talk to the satellite. They actually made contact, but couldn't regain control over the propulsion system to change its trajectory. The ISEE-3 experiment does show that citizen science and hacking can be positive. Private groups could theoretically take control of satellites once NASA retires them and use them for a little bit of extra science. Of course, this depends on satellites having available consumables, things like power to work the radio and fuel for the engines. Without those key elements, there's not much to do with a disused satellite. We can't do secret episodes without our sponsors. Thanks to Grades for sponsoring this episode. Grades makes snacking exciting by combining wholesome ingredients with flavors we all love to create over 100 nutritionist approved snacks. Go to Grades.com and enter promo code SEEKER to get a free sampler box delivered to your home or work. What satellites would you like to see brought back to life? Let us know in the comments, be sure to like this video and subscribe for more Seeker. And speaking of satellites, what happens if you lose one? We have a video on that right here. And speaking of space, we were nominated for a Webby Award for sending a VR camera to the edge of space, and you can help us win. Just go to vote.webbyawards.com and search for Seeker, then click vote, simple as that. It really means a lot. And if you haven't seen the video, check it out on Seeker VR. Thanks for watching.